Welcome back to Crash Test Hockey. By now, you've probably heard all about this trade. I'm a little late to the altar, but I wanted to share my two cents with you. Uh, now, before I jump into this, if you're a subscriber, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. You know how it helps with the algorithm. And if you're new to the channel, please smash that subscribe button. The water's great. I'd love to have you. Now, if you don't know the details of this trade, I'll whip them up beside me, uh, courtesy OFX and Cap Friendly. Toronto gets Ryan O'Reilly, Noel Achari, and Peeler through Minnesota, albeit. Uh, from the St. Louis Blues, first some draft picks, a player, and a prospect. How do I grade these two clubs on this trade? I'll give St. Louis B+, A-. minus. Um, they picked up some more picks. They now have three first-rounders and a very deep draft coming up. And the Leafs... Probably give them this about the same thing, A minus. I mean, some people in social media are saying Toronto paid too much, but uh, maybe. I mean, but they're a contender. They're chasing a cup. This is what you got to do. They gave up four picks, yeah, but they're spread over the next three different drafts. And the first, they only gave up one of those, and it's probably going to be a late pick, right? The player, Mikhail Abramov, is a B level prospect that they're giving away, which. He's never going to crack their lineup, at least for this season and next. And Adam Godet was an NHLer playing in the AHL this season. Couldn't crack their lineup either, but he, albeit he's put up some good points uh, with the Toronto Marlies. He should be a nice warm body for the Blues for the remainder of the season. All luck to him. And that's that. Uh, let's talk a bit more about Ryan O'Reilly, though. We all know Ryan O'Reilly is a 200-foot player who's a beast in the playoffs. Uh, this year, he hasn't looked great, but the chart I'm going to throw up here, courtesy of Top Down and JFresh Hockey, shows you he, the people he's playing with just weren't finishing, and the goaltender kind of was poop for all that time. And the three games he played since he came back from his broken foot have been great for St. Louis, and he looked good for Toronto in his first game against Montreal. Coach Sheldon Keefe had Ryan O'Reilly slotted in as the second-line center, Bumping John Tavares to the left wing, as a lot of people were talking about on social media in the past. And of course, Mitch Marner on the right, which might make them one of the best cycling lines in hockey right now. Not to mention, their face-off percentage has gotten even better with Achari and O'Reilly. Because Matthews, Camp, and JT are also over 50% in the face-off dot. Um, the other options are, you know... Put, putting Riley as a third line center, maybe bumping Camp to his wing uh, with Engvall on the other side, or Achari and making like another shutdown unit for like the playoffs. I'm sure we'll see, you know, Sheldon Keefe tinker a lot because the options are just limitless here. They also have him on the second power play unit. Although um, I kind of like to see Bunting and Nylander switch spots from PP1 and PP2 uh, because I'd like to see O'Reilly play with. Um, you know, a puck carrier like Nylander on that unit. But, you know, there's an argument to have a player like Matthews and Nylander on the same PP1 because they're both really good shooters, gives them more options, blah, blah, blah. Keefe will just continue to toy with this. Uh, they also have him slotted in on the second PK, which I'm sure will give Marner a bit more of a breather because he's been playing like stupid minutes in the past few weeks, like upwards of 25 minutes a night. What was it, like 28 one night as well? Was it against the Columbus Blue Jackets? Anyways, uh, let's talk a bit about Noel Achari. Now, this is a player who knows his role. He's a bottom six guy who hits a lot and with machismo, not like Zach Aston Reese. Uh, he's also good defensively, got the faceoff dot as I already mentioned. And he can also play on the PK, which we might see him on there once he gets a bit more acclimatized with the club. This is another playoff player. We all know he used to beat on them when he played with Boston. Then he went to Florida. Um, and he was with St. Louis for that just one season. I don't know why this guy bounces around so much because he's such a great bottom six guy. And he's, he never usually costs too much either. Hopefully the Leafs can re-sign him as well as O'Reilly next season. I know that might be a big of an ask, but uh, yeah, we can always hope. Let's move on now to Matthew Nyes. When he does become available, uh, I'd like to see him bump Zach Aston Reese 
out of the lineup um, in that you know uh, fourth line left wing spot so he can play with Achari and Kerfoot. And if they have to give up Kerfoot in a trade because you know cap space and they want an extra D or something, you know they bring up Pontus Holmberg. Um, who can also play center, I'll be, although he's not the greatest at the face-off dot, um, but he's always on the right side of the puck. He's great defensively, and he has nice hands, and that would just be the piece of the resistance, wouldn't it? And now that's a good segue for, are the Leafs done? Could they be doing anything else? I would love to see Toronto go after another depth defenseman. Now, I know Chikorin's probably a dream at this point, maybe always was. Ekholm's probably too pricey as well. Maybe we're looking at a sealer from Philadelphia, or if Washington continues to slide, Jensen, um, Orlev, maybe he's too pricey too. I would love your opinion on that, because Kyle Dubas is always looking at someone who everyone else isn't, right? Because at, at, come playoff time, I don't think Sandine should be in the starting six. Um, and Hull should, at the very least, be in the bottom pairing. And if they were going after another forward, probably not. Most likely not. But if they were, Garnet Hathaway would look great in a Leafs uniform, wouldn't he? In any case, thank you so much for watching. Um, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And if you want to support me and the channel, uh, you can do that through my crowdfunding page called Buy Me A Coffee. You'll see a link down below or on my homepage. Thanks again, and hope to see you soon.